tutorials by Andrew Buckle. In this tutorial I'm just going to show you how to use, or well, some features anyway, of the spin blur. Now there's lots of different things you can do with it, but I'm going to, for example, show it with this line. Very easy to show it with a particularly single one line. So filter and blur gallery and spin blur. Now you can see straight away adds the spin blur. This point has no impact whatsoever on spin. It's just localized this area. So if you just go there and you can drag that out and you can then see the effect actually takes place at that point. So you've got the, and you just pull, pull that in. I'm actually going to pull it into the line itself so you can see. Now at that point, what you can see, you've got spin blur is set to 15. So 15, that's 15 degrees. So that's 15. If I actually set it to say, more obvious, 90, you can see the 90, it's got 90 degrees there. So if you actually move this around, you can move that around and see so you can squeeze it and modify it. You can make it bend, it's depending on the position of that. So you can just make that bend around there, but all the time it is still set to 90. You can see it's still set to 90. So 90 is a quite a nice example to show. I'm going to modify that as well. I'm just going to turn that way a bit smaller. All right now, just put it back there. You can also modify the actual sort of impact of the blur just by, if you just move these little dots, don't actually seem to, weirdly, there's no setting here. There's no setting for those little dots. It just, seem, just sort of appear a strength sort of. So you, you move that close to the center. And what you can see is that the effect of the blur, you've still got around the edge there, you've still got the blur, but this central bit and the strength of it is reduced. So you, to get maximum strength, just put it straight out there. So again, you can see the impact there. If you actually move that around and reduce that, so reduce that, still see that, but that's at the maximum range. So right, I'm just gonna go away from that now, because what I want to do now is to show that you can also, not only that, you can actually add other ones. So if you just want another, Spin blur, you don't have to have obviously just one, you can actually add two, so you can click there and you've got another spin blur and you can see the effect again on that. And actually, that doesn't take into account the other blur, you can see it doesn't have any impact at all. You're not blurring this bit of blur, it's actually its own separate sort of universe. So you can actually create some interesting effects just by reducing that down or changing the settings of that blur. So you can actually create blur like that. Again, go into center, which overlaps like layers in a way. There's no, unfortunately, no blending modes. It'd be a nice feature to have blending modes to actually blend these effects. You can create some interesting sort of distortions just by adding, say, three, four, five, ten, and create them all over the screen. So you can sort of have them wave effects. Now, I don't actually want the two at this point, but I'll just show you, just want to show you that you can have two or three. So, right, and I'm going to extend that out now because I want it to appear over the whole of that line. And I can always move it in and you can see a sort of fan effect. And again, this is all still set at 90. You've still got that 90 degrees and I'm going to go maximum range there. So just having it, so you can see the underline. To a degree that is a sort of a, a layer and effect in itself. So if I actually, do that in another video, I think. Now, right, once you've actually moved that there, I'm going to show you the motion effects. Now, motion effects are quite interesting because what it can do is it creates a sort of, but I'm going to set that to the maximum, strobe strength. And then straight away, you can see what it creates with these lines. You've actually got four lines. So say you set five, six, seven, you can actually see it's not instantaneous, it takes a few seconds to process it and it will actually make those a lot clearer in a few seconds, hopefully. <laughs> Certainly will. Yes, there it is. You've got the thing. You can actually also modify the strobe flash duration. So you can actually set that much sharper just by changing the strobe flash duration. So it will be a sharper line. Now, what you can do if you want to blur those lines, you can actually say, I'm going to change that to, say, 10 degrees, and let's see what happens. They're all blurred now. And if I actually reduce that, and I'm just gonna reduce that strobe flashes, again, you can see two lines, but they've got the 
90 degrees, 90 degrees setting, like that, 90 degrees, 90 degrees, and also you've got the 10 degrees of this. Now, of course, you can modify the strobe strength, it just fades back into a single. You can actually increase it, set it to the maximum, and you can see you've got this strobe. Unfortunately, it only goes to 20, so you've got that 20 degrees, that's 20 degrees, 20 degrees, they're exactly identical. So if you want to, you can of course go all the way around. So strobe flashes, I'm going to make that line so you can actually see them. You can see the lines then of obviously that 90. Instead of 90, you can actually set that to 360. And obviously it takes a bit more time to process it, but it will actually add all those strobe flashes all the way around. You can see them all forming now. I'm just going to reduce that down so you can actually put it down to say five so you can or five or six so you can see it a bit better than that so at this point you can see there's a unfortunately what happens is one of the lines obviously overlaps when it's 360 so if I actually change that bit you can actually see the, the actual effect there we've got three flashes if you obviously have it at 360 what happens is the strobe actually overlaps the first one so you actually don't you're always out of sync you get like three you get two four you get three and so on and so on so you can do that again and again you can modify the strobe duration just to get some additional blurring in those around there so that's a quick run through some of the features of obviously motion effects as well as the actual spin blur but there's an awful lot of other things you can do with the spin blur i say create some really interesting abstract designs you can combine them in many different ways and well, I will go through those in other videos. Hope you found this of interest. Thank you much.